So today we're going to talk about pediatric end-of-life care. Now this is a really hard lecture for me to get through. Um, every year when I do this for the CETA students, I never get through it without crying. Um, so th that is why most of most everything that you really need is going to be on the slides because I usually end up uh, falling apart and tears leaking down my face as I try and talk about this subject. For most people, thinking about um, children dying is a very hard thing to think about. It triggers a lot of um, emotional vulnerabil vulnerability for those of you who are parents and uh, or for anybody who just loves children because when children die, it seems like it's a very unnatural thing um, when in fact children die every day all around the world. Um, so. It's important to make sure um, that children get the very best possible care right up um, until they um, pass away. And then we also need to make sure we take good care of those families as well. I know of a family who lost a child and when it was time to take the child off the vent and say goodbye, it was the family's wishes to bring in the siblings and all be together as a family one last time. So the ICU staff arranged for a non-hospital bed, um, there's plenty of those in the hospital, to be brought up to the ICU. So it was just like a big, I shouldn't say big, it was like a full or a queen size bed that was brought into the ICU. And the whole family, the siblings, the grandparents, everybody came in and then they brought the child to the bed and the family just surrounded the child and loved on him for his last moments on earth. I cannot think of a more peaceful way for a family to say goodbye to their child um, than that. And that took effort on the part of the nurses to make that happen. So don't be afraid to think outside the box and make the impossible happen. It can be done. Don't be willing to take no for an answer. Be an advocate. You all as nurses cannot always change the course of fate or outcomes for your patients, but you can make the road that they have to take a lot easier. By allowing the family the time that they needed to say goodbye, they gained closure and peace with a terrible situation. It didn't change the fact that they lost their son, their brother, their grandson, but allowed them all to grieve and be together and allowed them to lean on each other. And they surrounded their beloved family member with love as he passed on. Parents fear and worry about their child suffering and children worry about their parents suffering. Many of you are parents and I know you can relate to that. Children may fear dying when their parents are not there and parents have that exact same fear of their child dying alone. Bottom line, if a child is dying parents have open access to their child always. You never make the parents leave the bedside, ever. The RN's role is to recognize when grief becomes abnormal. Most hospital nurses won't see this or won't even be able to deal with it because by the time people would have abnormal grief reactions, uh, the family or whoever's experiencing the abnormal grief is not going to still be in the hospital. But hospice nurses may see this when they do their follow-up in six months or a year. Or you may see it if you work in a physician's office and you are following up with parents who've lost their child. You may recognize it in a friend or you may know someone from church or from another activity who is experiencing um, a very complicated or abnormal grief reaction. One of the best things you can do is refer families to counseling and grief support groups and then it's not uncommon for parents to need to go on some antidepressant medication for a period of time or maybe even for the rest of their life once they lose their child. Refer people and help them get the help that they need. So it's important to know that nurses can grieve too. 
It's not uncommon for nurses and staff to get very close to patients, especially when they've cared for them for a long time or many, many times, especially over the period of months or years. When those patients pass, it is sad for the nurses and it's sad for the staff as well. Most hospitals have support systems in place for nurses um, for this very thing. They may provide some free counseling sessions at no cost for employees. It is important for nurses to recognize and understand that they grieve as well um, and to use whatever, you know, personal and professional support systems that one that one has available.